pretend to be where the light and darkness meet on the edge of the horizon through the trees I am a narcissist crippled with self-doubt I've got a courage that brings me to my knees hello hi and howdy how's everybody doing today I certainly hope everyone's doing well if you are new here, welcome. My name is Jenny, and it's very nice to meet all of you. If you are a return visitor, as always, welcome back. If you have not done so and you get anything out of this content, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Today's story is a suggestion, but the lady who suggested it asked to remain anonymous, and I will respect that. If anybody else has a story that they'd like covered and do not feel comfortable with their name used, just please let me know and I assure you I will not use your name. Um, before we jump in, I do want to warn you all that this is a very graphic story and it does involve a child, so please continue with caution. Now let's jump in. Maurice Isaiah Torres was born on the 3rd of July in 2008 to parents, and that is a term I'm using very loosely. Mauricio Torres and Kathy Lynn Torres. Per find a grave for Maurice, who often went by Isaiah, he loved to volunteer at the local nonprofit organization, the Good Samaritan Community Center in Rogers, Arkansas. The executive director of the Good Samaritan Center, Debbie Rambo, said that his favorite thing to do there was to break down boxes. She said that he would break them down and get them ready for recycling. He would do this for the reward of a box of granola bars. She said that he, along with his two sisters, would be there every Tuesday night to help. She further said that Isaiah was a fun-loving boy who loved to help out. She said that he took his job very seriously. To give a little bit of backstory on the family, Mauricio was born on the 24th of December in 1969. His mother gave him up shortly after that um, to his father, who at the time was only 17 years old. He raised Mauricio with the help of his parental uncles. And in 1979, when Mauricio was 10 years old, his father, uncles, and Mauricio all moved legally to the United States from El Salvador. When they arrived, they lived in Banning, California, which is in Riverside County. He was studying to be an occupational therapist. Mauricio was married to a woman named Linda. Mauricio and Linda lived in California together and they had two children, Erica and Mauricio, but he prefers to go by Taurus. And they gave an interview and here's part of the interview. So we heard it was, you know, that they got the print threads taken away and I thought, you know, good, you know, it, it's done, like that, that was our, you know, justice, you know? And then to hear that, here he is. With three more kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I was scared. I, I was afraid to know, like, what happened to them. I, he called, my brother called me on the phone, I was shaking. The reason why I named Jeff for me is because you're gonna hurt people just like I did. I'll be a monster just like I am. Was it always about him? Yes, he was very self-centered. Extremely. He had to eat first, he always came first, his knees came before ours, you know. Yeah, like we'd get in trouble if we, as soon as he walked in the door, if we didn't come up and give him hugs and kisses yeah. and stuff, you know? Oh yeah, he, I mean, we had to treat him like father of the year. Yeah. We couldn't show that we were scared of him. He would even get mad because like our mom would try to protect us, you know, or loved us. He, he hated all of that. He didn't want us to be close. Our relief was our mom. Yeah, definitely. She she tried to keep us and protect us, and as bad as the things that we went through, you know, she still tried to teach us love and unconditional love, and that we didn't want <laughs> the other one to be hurt. But yeah, my brother called me one day, and he asked me, he's like, and he's crying on the phone, he goes, look, I'm, I'm old enough now. You know, please tell me the truth. Did the things that happened to Isaiah, did, did he ever hurt you? That's when I told my brother. My brother never knew it until all this happened. When this would happen, I would I'd tell my brother, I just, I'd tell him like, I'm sorry. We and just, to. I'd tell him I'm sorry, like I don't, 
I don't want to hurt you, Dad. Tell him just please just scream louder so we have to stop it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. This is all really, really hard for me. You know, to, to, to tell our story and have people listen and... Because when you, when you read about this and you hear about it, it's like, how can this be real? How can this really happen, you know? And I just, I felt so bad. I felt like I failed all my brothers and sisters. And I do want to say um, to Erica and to Taurus, if y'all ever see this, I hope that y'all now know that none of that was your fault. None of it. Um, and I'm very proud of you because that was so brave of y'all to come out and tell your story. Kathy was born on the 4th of July in 1971 in Haiti, Missouri, which is in eastern Periscot County. When she was four years old, her family, along with her, moved to Jonesboro. She went to Williams Baptist University in Walnut Ridge, Arkansas, where she studied business computer operations. Kathy also had children prior to meeting and marrying Mauricio. She had Nicholas, Quentin, Spencer, and Bailey. When the couple married in 2002, they lived in Jonesboro, Arkansas, and then they moved to Bella Vista, Arkansas. After marrying Kathy, Mauricio lost contact with his two older children that he had had with Linda, Erica, and Taurus. Isaiah had a twin sister who was obviously also born on the 3rd of July in 2008 and another sister that was born on the 4th of June in 2007. The children attended school at the Ambassadors of Christ Academy. Isaiah was in kindergarten. His teacher, Perry Heffernan, and his music teacher, Hannah Paul, contacted DHS and reported seeing bruises and scratches on Isaiah. They also noted that his behavior changed as he was once a very happy and outgoing young boy and all of a sudden he was so reserved. They took pictures, which they also provided for DHS. They also reported that Isaiah was stealing food out of other children's lunches and he was seen getting food out of the trash can. Though they reported it, they said that they never heard anything else about it. And as happens all too often in these stories, Isaiah was then removed from school under the lie that he would be homeschooled. DHS said that the accusations were unsubstantiated. The family, if you want to call it that, Mauricio, Kathy, and Isaiah's twin sister, who were both six years old, and their younger sister, who was five years old, took a camping trip to Missouri on the weekend of March 28th and 29th in 2015. On the way home, um, per Kathy, Isaiah began to complain of a stomach ache. She made a call at 11.33 p.m. to 911 concerning Isaiah, who was not breathing. 911. Um, hi. I live at 9 Crystal Circle in Bella Vista. Yes, it's Crystal Circle. And my son is, is stopped breathing. He's six years old. Is he a... Isaiah. No, Isaiah. Come on, buddy. Wake up, buddy. It was just a few minutes ago. He was breathing and snoring. I mean, and he does snore. He always has. Okay. But earlier today, he told us his stomach was hurting, and we gave him some Pepto-Bismol, but, I mean, he ate and he drank. Okay. And... When the paramedics and fire rescue arrived at the home at 9 Cresswell Circle in Bella Vista, only minutes after the call was made, they found six-year-old Isaiah lying in the floor of the living room with Mauricio attempting to give CPR. The paramedics quickly took over the CPR and prepped young Isaiah to be transported to the hospital, but noticed he had several injuries on his body. They requested the Bella Vista Police Department be made aware. They also asked what happened to Isaiah, and Kathy told them that they returned home from camping and Isaiah was complaining of a stomach ache. She further told them that she didn't know what could be wrong with Isaiah as he had no medical conditions that would cause what was happening. Officer Blake from the Bella Vista Police Department was dispatched at 11.52 p.m. He arrived at the residence at exactly midnight, but the emergency personnel were ready to rush Isaiah to Mercy Hospital, so he was redirected to the hospital at this time. He arrived at Mercy Hospital at 12.07 a.m., 
Dr. Franklin Mayhew tried to save Isaiah, but sadly at 12.23 a.m. on the 30th of March in 2015, Isaiah was pronounced deceased. Officer Blake then spoke with firefighters Chuck Lawson and Captain Cottingham in reference to the incident. They said when they arrived, Isaiah was laying lifeless on the floor and 45-year-old Mauricio was trying to give him CPR. They informed Officer Blake of what Kathy had told them, but said they noticed cuts, bruises, puncture wounds, and none of them appeared accidental. They put Isaiah into the ambulance, but were not able to revive him. Officer Blake then photographed Isaiah's little body and noted injuries, including his head, his knees, and the tops of his feet. He had multiple wounds on his back and major bruising on his right side. Dr. Mayhew told Officer Blake he further had signs of blunt force trauma to his head, trunk, extremities, as well as multiple superficial lacerations and bruises of unknown age. While they were going over the injuries, a nurse walked up to inform them that fresh blood had been just found in Isaiah's rectum. Dr. Mayhew spoke with Mauricio, who told him that the chemical burns were caused in the past and were, and were treated at the Arkansas Children's Hospital in Little Rock. Dr. Mayhew confirmed that the medical database did indicate that Isaiah had been treated for some type of injury to his back in 2014. Officer Green then remained with the family until they were escorted to the Bella Vista Police Department to be interviewed. Kathy was transported in the back of Officer Green's vehicle and Mauricio and the two girls followed in the family vehicle. Mauricio and Kathy were kept separated at the police department. Kathy was originally interviewed on the morning of the 30th of March in 2015 by Detective Ed Williams of the Bella Vista Police Department. She told Detective Williams that they arrived home on Sunday night at around 10 p.m. from their camping trip in Hollister, Missouri. She said that earlier around 2 p.m., Isaiah had began complaining of a stomach ache. She said she gave him Pepto-Bismol and she thought he was better. She said on the ride home, Isaiah had fallen asleep and he awoke when they arrived home. She said that he walked into the house by himself and even assisted in unloading the vehicle. She said that when they got the vehicle unloaded, that Isaiah took a shower as normal. She said that he got out of the shower and got dressed in his Spider-Man pajamas, and she then gave him some green tea because he said his stomach was still hurting, and she gave him some gummy vitamins and laid him down on the bed in the master bedroom. She said he quickly fell asleep and began to snore, and she said that she then left the room, and when she returned, he wasn't breathing. She denied any knowledge of bruising or lacerations on Isaiah's little body. She said that she did notice his eyes were dark, but she just figured that because he was so clumsy, he run into doorknobs. She said that he would do that all the time. She said she did not see him without his shirt on and said that this is why she never noticed the bruising on his back. Detective Williams informed Kathy that the injuries on Isaiah appeared to be CA. She said she didn't do it. So Williams asked her if Mauricio had done this and she just replied, quote, I didn't do it, let's just say that. She was then told that Isaiah's nose appeared to be broken and she told him no, it had always been crooked and it, it didn't appear that way in photos. She went on to tell Detective Williams that she rarely spanked any of her children and that it, she hadn't in months. She further said that Mauricio was a loving father and that the two very rarely argued. He concluded his interview with Kathy and began his interview with Mauricio. He also told Detective Williams that Isaiah had complained of a stomach ache, but he said that he also had diarrhea and he threw up. He did also say that they gave him Pepto-Bismol and made sure he stayed hydrated. Then their stories started to just differ quite a bit. He said that when they arrived home, Isaiah was difficult to wake up and that Kathy had to assist him into the shower to get the campfire smell off of him. He said that they put him in the bed, hoping that he would sleep it off and be okay. He said he asked Kathy, should we take him to the ER? But Kathy just said that the ER will not take him for just a stomach ache. Detective Williams then confronted Mauricio as to the source of the variety of injuries and bruises that were all over baby Isaiah. Mauricio said that he had no knowledge of the bruising and then he was asked about a diamond-shaped mark that was on Isaiah's abdomen. He told them that they would have to ask his wife about that. 
He further said that they were probably from the many falls as Isaiah was very clumsy. The detective left and then returned, and he said that Mauricio was fixated on the possibility when he returned that Kathy had given a statement that would implicate him. He told Detective Williams he figured Kathy had cut a deal and was blaming him. Williams told Mauricio that he just wanted to know what happened to Isaiah. Mauricio then told Williams, quote, don't try to get me to portray my wife, end quote. Mauricio began to look at the photos of Isaiah's remains. He said to him the photos looked like neglect. He said CA is deliberate. He again said that he didn't do anything to Isaiah and he would not betray his wife. Isaiah's sisters were picked up by DHS and they were transported to the Children's Advocacy Center in Little Rock, Arkansas, so that the forensic interviews could be conducted. During the interview with Erin Kramer, one of the sisters stated that Isaiah began complaining of a stomach ache on the 29th of March. She said that Kathy drove to the store and picked up medicine. She said that Isaiah sat down a lot while they were on the camping trip. She said that he slept on the ride home, and when they arrived home, Mauricio had to carry him inside. She further said that Mauricio laid Isaiah on the bed where Kathy and the sisters had to undress him for his shower. She said that Kathy and Mauricio then carried Isaiah into the shower. She said that Mauricio held him up in the shower to bathe him and that Isaiah had fell at least once. She said that Kathy then picked Isaiah up and laid him on the bed. She said Isaiah was acting strange and was not really awake. She said that they got some clothes out and put them on Isaiah, his Spider-Man pajamas. She said that Kathy and Mauricio then gave Isaiah green tea and gummy vitamins. She denied that her parents used spanking as a form of discipline. Erin Kramer then interviewed the other sister. She stated that Isaiah woke up early Sunday morning complaining of a stomach ache. She said that he watched part of a movie and then he fell asleep. She said Isaiah had scratches and bruises because he often fell down. She said that he also busted his knees by falling down while trying to climb. She said that Mauricio had to wake Isaiah up when they got home because he didn't know they were home. She said that she and her sister then helped undress Isaiah for the shower. She said that he had to be held up by Mauricio while they were in the shower because he was still asleep while in the shower. On the 30th of March in 2015, armed with a search warrant, the Bella Vista police officers entered the family's home at Nine Cresswell Circle in Bella Vista. They discovered what appeared to be blood spatter on the walls, floor, and ceiling of the master bedroom and the attached bathroom. They also found what appeared to be blood spatter on two 15-pound dumbbells located in the master bathroom next to the bathtub. Then they found a fireplace poker tool with a diamond-shaped handle that matched the diamond-shaped bruise that was found on Isaiah's abdomen. It was found on the floor by the bed in the master bedroom. There was also vomit on the bed of the master bedroom. They also recovered a stethoscope from the bed. On the 31st of March in 2015, Dr. Stephen Erickson of the Arkansas State Medical Examiner's Office conducted an autopsy in Little Rock on the remains of Isaiah. The manner of death was ruled a homicide. The preliminary cause of the death of Isaiah was acute peritonitis due to anal rectal trauma. Also on the 31st of March in 2015, another interview was conducted with Kathy Torres. This time, the interview was done by Captain Tim Cook of the Bella Vista Police Department. Kathy told Captain Cook she didn't know if Mauricio had done anything to Isaiah as she wasn't with him the whole time. She said that on Sunday, the 29th of March, she left and went to Lowe's and was gone for approximately 45 minutes. She said that beginning the 27th of March until the 911 call, Mauricio was with Isaiah the entire time. She further told Captain Cook that she had witnessed Mauricio harm Isaiah in the past. She said she had seen him hit Isaiah with a belt, an extension cord, and his knuckles. She said she had witnessed Isaiah bleeding from injuries caused by Mauricio. She said that she knows it was her fault what happened to Isaiah as she didn't stop him from hurting Isaiah. She said that when Mauricio would hit Isaiah, he would tell him if he cried, he would only hit him again because, according to Kathy, Mauricio said that Isaiah has to learn how to be a man. Kathy said she would treat the injuries on Isaiah that were caused by Mauricio with Neosporin. 
She said that she had spanked Isaiah in the past also, but she's never left marks. On the 1st of April, Captain Cook contacted Kathy and asked her to do another interview, and she agreed. This time, she told Captain Cook that she was scared of Mauricio. She said she shouldn't have let fear take over her life, and she admitted that she knew better. She admitted that Mauricio had hurt Isaiah. She was informed of the SA to Isaiah's rectum. She denied any knowledge of this. She said the first time she personally witnessed Mauricio hit Isaiah was around January when Isaiah had gotten to where he wouldn't listen. She said as soon as she came home from work, the girls would start tattling on Isaiah. And what kind of mother blames your kids? Mauricio would get upset and gather everyone into a bedroom for a discussion. He would conclude the discussion by telling the kids what they were supposed to do, and then he would send Kathy and the girls out of the room while he spanked Isaiah. Kathy further told Captain Cook that she recalled once seeing Mauricio spank Isaiah with an electrical cord, and after he hit him a couple of times on the hind end, Isaiah fell and Mauricio hit him on the back. She said she guessed that his back was hit about 10 times. She said that Isaiah did bleed. Mauricio then sent Isaiah to the shower, and then she put Neosporin on him. She said another time she remembered Mauricio hitting Isaiah in the head with his knuckles, and he began to bleed. This time, he also sent him to the shower, and then they put Neosporin on him. On the 3rd of April, the officers executed a search warrant on the Captiva camper trailer used by the Torres family. A large circular area of what appeared to be blood was found on the mattress. The mattress had been flipped over so the stain would be on the bottom. Numerous other areas of suspected blood spatter were observed throughout the camper. The stains were swabbed and sent to the Arkansas State Crime Laboratory for analysis. On the 6th of April, Dr. Erickson, on a conference call, said that this final trauma to the rectum occurred within 24 hours of Isaiah's passing. He further noted multiple healing, healed and acute blunt force injuries to Isaiah's head, trunk, and extremities. Dr. Erickson stated that Isaiah's death was, was in the spectrum of chronic CA syndrome as Isaiah had suffered repeated significant injuries. In summary, Maurice Isaiah Torres died as a result of chronic CA with the final act of anal and rectal trauma occurring while he was in the exclusive care of his parents. As parents of Isaiah, they each had a duty to prevent this. During trial testimony, Dr. Erickson testified that Isaiah appeared to have had some of his teeth, his incisors, knocked or ripped out, head injuries were innumerable, facial bruising, broken nose, whip marks, and the child's back showed scarring from chemical burns. The doctor shaved Isaiah's head during the examination and revealed tearing of the skin, fresh contusions, and scars. He said some had been done over and over at different times. He showed the jury a series of post-mortem photos and said pictures speak for themselves. Three times in April of 2015, a decorated and award-winning veteran of the force, Captain Tim Cook, interrogated Mauricio Torres. Mauricio told Captain Cook, quote, If I participated, I didn't do things alone. He further said, I know I'm guilty by association. He said his wife, Kathy, was calmer than he was. He said that his wife's behavior changed after calling 911. He said her reaction was effing fake. The interrogation tapes were also played for the jury. The defendant, Mauricio Torres, referred to the death of his son, Isaiah, as a puzzle to which he didn't have all the pieces, but said the ultimate solution would involve him and his wife. He further told the investigator, Captain Tim Cook, of the Bella Vista Police Department, quote, You've got to put both of us together. I'm all for justice, to which he added punishment for the guilty. He continued to try to blame his wife by saying she had an inability to express her feelings or make gestures of love, and she lacked nurturing instinct. After trying to put the blame off on Kathy, Mauricio tried to speculate that Isaiah had an undiagnosed condition or diabetes that could be a contributing factor in his passing away. 
He went on to say that Isaiah had problems with female authority, which he pointed out that he did as well. He told Captain Cook that he had a bad childhood and was beat with a belt at the hands of his own father. He told them that he had only spanked his children, but admitted that he did hit his son with a belt. He was caught off guard and became silent for a moment after he was asked if he ever struck Isaiah with an extension cord, and then he just admitted that he had. He then told them that, in fact, the spankings of Isaiah became a family event in which he, Kathy, and the girls would all participate. He said that the girls would strike Isaiah with sandals, and per Mauricio, it was a game that was fun for them. He said that Isaiah was also punished by being forced to do exercises and another one of these stories. He would have to do squats and push-ups, and he said that in one event, Isaiah hit himself in the head with a 15-pound weight. This is the point when Captain Cook informed Mauricio that the cause of the death of Isaiah had been determined to be chronic CA and severe rectal injury that led to internal bleeding and sepsis. He asked Mauricio who essayed Isaiah, and Mauricio responded that it wasn't him, and he said that that didn't make sense. Captain Cook told Mauricio that this is what caused Isaiah to lose his life, and this is why he had a stomach ache. Mauricio actually said at this point, what a horrible death, but I don't know anything about it. I don't. Captain Cook explained to Mauricio that the essay wasn't necessarily sexual in nature and more likely an issue of power. Mauricio's response was simply, that makes sense now. Captain Cook went on to inform Mauricio that a pair of cushions in the RV that they camped in on the weekend of the 28th and 29th of March were found to be stained with the blood of Isaiah. Mauricio told Captain Cook that if he bled, he wasn't aware. He went on to point out that Isaiah and the other children had played outside, and then Isaiah complained of a stomach ache. From here, Captain Cook tried to, reason, tried to reason with Mauricio and told him that it would take courage and integrity to tell the truth, the complete truth. I don't think this man has any courage or integrity. He told him this is very serious as someone took Isaiah's life. Instead of making Mauricio forthcoming, this made him defensive. He told Cook that if he had done something, he wouldn't have called 911. He also reminded Cook that he had agreed to an interview voluntarily. Cook again started to remind Mauricio of the details of the autopsy. Mauricio responded with, whoops, guilty, you know. He said he really thought the medical examiner would find a medical condition that no one had picked up on. He then asked for an attorney. Cook then informed him that he and his wife, Kathy, were being arrested. The following day, Mauricio asked to speak to Cook again. Cook started the interview by reminding Mauricio of his rights and told him he could stop the interview at any time, and he then told Mauricio that he looked emotional and asked him what he would like to make right. Mauricio told Cook that he wanted to clear up everything and said, quote, as you know, I've been protecting my wife. He asked Cook if the process would go faster with a confession. He went on to say that he was not made to be locked up. He said he was thinking of unaliving himself, but that if he did, he felt that she would walk free and there'd be no justice for his son. He wanted to know why his wife had lesser charges, but then he was reminded they were facing the same charges. He said he must now fight for his other children. He said what happened was accidental. He said that he and his wife were both at fault. He further told Cook that when his son died, a part of him died also. He said he did not want to betray his wife, but was reminded it wasn't betraying Kathy, but betraying Isaiah. Cook let him know that his mother-in-law had taken care of the funeral arrangements for Isaiah. Mauricio told Cook that he had came to see him as a confidant, and if he revealed the truth of the case, it would become the jurisdiction of Missouri. As is often done in these stories, Cook attempted to turn Mauricio against Kathy by telling her that Kathy was trying to put all of the blame on him. He said that Kathy had told them that she and the girls were at Lowe's when it happened. Mauricio told Cooks that Kathy was lying. Cook addressed the chemical burns on Isaiah. Mauricio said that it happened while Isaiah was playing in the bathtub. He told Cook that he would admit to inappropriate beatings of Isaiah for the previous two and a half years. He said that he and Kathy were both equally guilty. He ended the interview at this point. 
On the 7th of April in 2015, Captain Cook interviewed Mauricio once again. This time, Mauricio told the graphic details of the end of Isaiah's life. And ladies and gentlemen, here is my warning. This is very graphic and hard to hear. Mauricio began the interview telling Captain Cook, quote, It is time that I do this. It's time that I put this to rest. It's time to be a man. And that ain't going to happen. Captain Cook stopped him there and reminded him of his rights. Mauricio told Captain Cook that he is doing this for his son and his girls and also for justice. He further said that he is a man of love and compassion. And then in the next breath, he said, quote, I know I'm a criminal and a monster. He told Captain Cook, but I'm going to make you a hero. I'm a criminal and, and a monster and all that, and especially, but I'm about to make you a hero. He's Bella Vista and all that because he's going to solve this case for And you said that you did it once before. No, I just put the stick. I did that one for him. I tell how, you. How, how long before this last Sunday was that? A while. It was. I mean, normally I was spanking. The reason why she's not saying anything. Because she doesn't want to implement herself. Does that make sense? Because she knows she is. The truth is what we need, and the truth is what... It's going to give me the needle, but... I don't know. And the truth is what everybody else needed to hear. Then he told him he needed his help in the form of food. He said he's required 90 grams of protein daily following his surgery and said that the food he is being served in the jail is horrible and insufficient to maintain his health. And I can't with this jackass. He read a handwritten statement provided by Kathy and told Captain Cook that it's all lies. He told him that his wife had control issues and anything she wants, she gets. He then simply said to Cook, big stick. He said the weapon used to take Isaiah's life was destroyed without even thinking about it. He said it was left in a fire pit at the campsite. He further told him the death was an accident. He said that while camping, he found Isaiah eating a piece of cake without permission. To punish him, per Mauricio, he inserted a stick into Isaiah's rectum. He said that the stick was at least four inches long. He said that his wife, Kathy, then ordered Isaiah to do squats with the stick in his rectum. He said Kathy decided that he wasn't doing them fast enough for her liking, so she walked over to him and pushed him down on the stick and it caused him to fall. He said at this point, feces came out of Isaiah. He said, however, he didn't think his wife's intentions were to take Isaiah's life. He said that it is what took his life. He said the family then roasted marshmallows while Isaiah complained of the pain. He said part of the stick broke off before the rest of it was thrown in the fire. He said he used the part that was left to beat Isaiah and that was the only thing he responded to. He then told Cook, so you don't believe me then. Cook said the truth is what we needed. Mauricio said, quote, I just hung myself. Now at least I can die with dignity. No, you can't. He said he was blinded by love for his wife. He actually giggled and told Cook that Isaiah was so cute with the cake on his face. What? He said not long after, Isaiah told him, I don't feel so good. My stomach hurts. Taurus said he didn't think much about it because he only saw feces come out and no blood. Mauricio also admitted to Captain Cook that this was not the only time that this was done to Isaiah. He said that he did it once before. Kathy avoided a trial by pleading guilty in March of 2017. She received life without the possibility of parole for the charge of unaliving Isaiah plus 20 years for battery. She tried to maintain her innocence and said that she pled guilty to avoid the unalive penalty because she believed that penalty would be like unaliving herself, which she said is a sin. Per her attorney, Tony Pirony, Kathleen deeply regrets what happened to her son, including her own decisions and actions. While the facts of their lives may never be fully known, they are satisfied that it's over. And I really believe she regrets it because I think she regrets that she got caught. Mauricio stood trial for the charges of capital and aliving and battery starting on the 3rd of March. Attorney Jeff Rosenweig asked Judge Brad Karen to reduce the charges to, to negligent unaliving 
manslaughter on alighting in the second degree, all of which were denied. He then asked for a first degree battery charge to be reduced to second degree, and this was also denied. At trial, Mauricio and Kathy's daughter testified that her biological family dynamic was not normal. She said the home was not safe or friendly and that Mauricio was generally the more dominant one. She explained that Isaiah was forced to sleep in a dog cage in her parents' bathroom. She said that her parents required her to lock him up almost every night. She said this is so he couldn't steal food. She said that both of her parents beat Isaiah and that she and her sister were forced to do it as well. She said they would give her a stick and make her hit Isaiah. She said she saw her father hit Isaiah with sticks, cables, and his fists. He was also forced to consume their father's urine and the feces of the family dog, and she saw her family rip Isaiah's teeth out with pliers. She said she heard him screaming and trying to get away. She said that while the family had regular meals, Isaiah was forced to eat rice and sometimes peanut butter along with beans. He would have to face the wall to eat. She said that she saw both parents hurt Isaiah, but her father was the more dominant one. She said that he was also forced to live in a trash can at one point for a month. She recalled when Isaiah was taken to the hospital for the chemical burns, it was because her parents poured bleach all over him. She said that on the day that her brother's life was taken, that he had been forced to sleep in the camper's bathtub tied up with shoelaces. When he was let up, he went outside to play, and then she saw Mauricio come outside, grab him by the ear, drag him back into the camper. She saw her father begin to beat Isaiah with a stick. She went back outside, and then she heard him yell at Isaiah, get naked. She said her father instructed both girls to keep quiet about what happened. Also during trial, Dr. Stephen Erickson testified that he had seen some bad cases of CA in his career, but that this is one of the worst. Jeff Rosenweig, one of Mauricio's attorneys, requested a mistrial. He said that Dr. Erickson's statement was prejudicial against Mauricio and improper profiling. He said that it would be impossible to cross-examine Erickson without having access to other autopsies. Judge Brad Karen denied the mistrial. He said that he was looking at the jury when the statement was made and he did not think the jury was impacted. Prosecutor Brian Sexton questioned Erickson about photos taken of Isaiah's remains. Erickson pointed at the injuries as he described them. He said that the teeth were missing and it was not consistent with falling out. From the impact, they were either pulled out or knocked out. He pointed out that Isaiah suffered a broken nose. He pointed out many injuries on Isaiah's legs, back, and stomach. He suffered 23 different injuries or wounds on his head. He further said that if he had gotten medical attention immediately, the doctors could have saved Isaiah's life. Mauricio himself testified that he was a horrible parent and a monster. He continued to also blame Kathy, however, Kathy testified that she had nothing to do with the CA on Isaiah. The jury convicted Mauricio of both charges. He told the jury, quote, please don't kill me. I want to redeem myself. My life is in your precious hands. Mauricio was found guilty of both of his charges. In 2016, he was sentenced to lose his life. In 2019, his conviction was overturned by the Arkansas Supreme Court over jurisdiction questions. This was because the injury was caused in Missouri while he passed away in Arkansas. They further said that SA could not be used as a factor for capital unaliving as Mauricio had no way of knowing it would end Isaiah's life. In 2020, during his sentencing hearing, Mauricio's stepson, Quentin Martin, was brought into the courtroom in shackles as he was serving a three-year sentence for substance charges. When he was on the witness stand, the prosecutor asked him if he'd ever been essayed by Mauricio. Quentin jumped over the witness stand and tried to attack Mauricio. The prosecutor, Nathan Smith, was yelling, don't, Quentin, don't. The courtroom was evacuated as the sheriff's deputies subdued Quentin. The defense attorney asked for a mistrial to be declared due to the dangerous circumstances, and it was granted. On the 9th of February in 2023, the, the third trial began. Prosecutors were again seeking the unalive penalty to take Mauricio's life. 
Mauricio testified this time, and he admitted the CA, but said that Kathy was the main aggressor. He said that he was a coward, and that I agree with, because he failed to protect Isaiah from Kathy. He changed his story this time about what happened the final day of Isaiah's life. This time, he told the jury that Isaiah was playing with the stick, and he fell, and it went into his rectum. This time, Mauricio showed more emotion and had lost a lot of weight. He even collapsed into one of his attorney's arms after he completed his testimony. The jury deliberated for six hours this time before returning a guilty verdict once again. But this time, however, Mauricio was sentenced to life without parole. Following the tragic end of Isaiah's life, it was released that DHS had been involved in the past. In 2014, DHS investigated the Torres family. The first time was on the 22nd of January, which was for inadequate supervision. And another time was on the 20th of March, which was due to cuts, bruises, and welts on Isaiah. According to DHS documents, both claims were founded unsubstantiated. The documents also show there were two other cases opened in, involving the Torreses in 2002 and 2004, but both were closed. The 2002 case was closed in 2003, and the 2004 case was closed in 2007. These cases involved taking other children out of the home and putting them into foster care. On top of that, in the early 2000s, Mauricio was investigated for essay on Kathy's daughter, who at the time was four years old. Local prosecutors decided against prosecuting the case, even though the judge said that there was sufficient evidence. Yeah, there was signs. There was signs. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of the tragic story of Maurice Isaiah Torres. And rest easy, baby boy. Rest easy. You are free. If you haven't done so and you get anything out of this channel, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment with your thoughts. If you have a story suggestion for me, Please send it to Jenny, period, Elisa, period, discusses at gmail.com. And until the next video. I go to parties full of everyone I love so I can slip out the back door and be alone. I fight with angels.